Hey, good morning, guys. Um, it's actually cold here, uh, but I'm not somebody who usually shows you how to do things on cars. Um, but my truck, I've been, I put a lot of miles on this truck. It's a 2017 Nissan. Uh, it's got the V6 4.0, and uh, it's a four-wheel drive. Anyway. So the other day I am looking, trying to figure out, cause I want to check all my fluids. And I'm like, where is the dipstick? And how do I check my transmission fluid? And it seems like a really easy thing. That's why this is just a short little video. Um, but here's the funny thing. I don't know why, and I've owned 35, 40 cars. So to check your transmission, um, the easiest thing, is first you're going to need a two extend a long extension or extension on, and you're going to need a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, which is why Buddy on my logo here. Make sure you have a 10 millimeter because we all lose our 10 millimeters. So you're going to need a 10 millimeter uh, socket because to check the fluid, you open the hood, make sure your thing is, but right here. If you look down, so if we're looking at the engine, I'm going to kind of go slowly in. So we're going to fly in. So we go over the battery and then down and see this thing. So that's your dipstick. However, next to it, the reason I was like, is that really the dipstick? For some reason, there is a 10 millimeter, which I've already loosened, bolt right there. So you have to take that bolt off because that holds, supposedly, this holds the cap on for the dipstick. So welcome to another episode of Junkyards and Barn Finds with Sean and I'm Sean. put that right there and that is your dipstick now we're gonna now that we have that loose so now you can see that's the dipstick so for anybody who wants a ticket you really it's kind of funny it's not like you can pull off the side of the road if you didn't bring a socket and so I just want to show that so then of course we're gonna do the standard start the car um, let it warm up for two or three minutes and then check our fluids and then we'll put the fluids in now you're going to put the fluid in the same hole right here so that's where you're going to add your fluids once you pull this out so you're also going to need a funnel to put that in and of course so we've got a little funnel here or you can use a long one there's there's longer funnels and everything else but you'll need a funnel and of course you're going to need to get the correct fluid for this which to be honest with you, i haven't looked up yet and i haven't owned a nissan so i don't know what the tranny fluid is but if it's low then i'll get some transmission fluid today and i'll put it in um however it took me a while to figure out where the heck the dipstick is and why i couldn't find it i mean your oil dipstick is right there right here so that's your other fluid right there so uh whoa and you know so then you also have your brakes you got your other your other fluids so you could check all your fluids but i just thought it was time that i make a small just a short little five minute video um or whatever this is i don't even know so we're gonna go ahead and start the engine you need to check your transmission if you're new to this you have to check your transmission with the transmission one if it's an automatic transmission if it's an automatic transmission you're probably this isn't going to apply to you anyway but we'll go ahead and start the motor and the reason why um i was concerned not really concerned but uh it just had a different feel now so i'm just i put a lot of miles on the truck recently it's also cold 
Uh, it was in the 30s up in Georgia. And so we'll just let it run for like a minute or two. And it just had a different feel to it. So I don't know. And um, so I kind of looked and, you know, evidently I've got about 130,000 miles on the truck now. Uh, I haven't, I bought the truck. It had under 100,000 when I got it. And I've had, I get the oil changed. Uh, honestly, a lot of times I don't feel like doing the oil change myself and I can go to a dealer and they can throw it up on a lift and dealers are actually cheaper than most of the oil change places. I just go in, you pay like $50 and you do everything. But I don't know if they actually check the transmission fluid. And I've noticed that it says a lot of times in Nissans, you should check the fluid at 100,000 miles. And this is the same V6 uh, four liter you'd find in, in the cars as well. I think they are pretty shared engine. But, um, you know, just standard maintenance stuff. So we're gonna check the fluids here in just a second. And uh, then we'll see if we have to add any. So I'll be back in a second. Just, you just need to get a paper towel. That is bone dry, guys, and that is not a good thing. Yeah, that is, that's dry, and that is not good. All right, so I'm gonna have to go up to the store. I knew there was something. So I'm gonna have to go up to the store, get myself some uh, transmission fluid. So I'll be back. All right, guys, so, uh, it's really low so I went to O'Reilly's and so I needed it's called a Nissan um, what is it Nissan uh, Nissan Matic 5 and so O'Reilly's has a global multi vehicle automatic and on the back here you can see where it says Nissan has all the list of the different makes and models. I don't know if you can see that, but it does say Nissan Matic 5, which is what we need for this. So I got two quarts. One, if we don't need two quarts, I can put the other quart in the back where I keep oil and stuff. And we can just put that in. Or second, if we need two quarts, we have two quarts. So I don't have to run up again. All right. So... Oh, let me open up the car. So we're gonna pull this out here. Lay that there. And let's get us a funnel. The longer is there a longer funnel in here? Let's see a longer let's see a long funnel. 
gonna be a longer funnel. All right. Uh, all right, so we got a funnel right here. And put this in the hole, if it fits. Nope. So we're gonna go with the smaller funnel because I think it fits better. So I'm gonna stick the funnel right in there, like that, okay? Let's not spill it because this stuff stinks. If you spill it, actually, so I'm gonna put this funnel into that funnel. Let's see. This when you do this. You just have to watch the lower funnel. Make sure you're not over splashing everything onto the ground. Just gonna put the court in. All right. Okay. All right, so that's a whole court. All right, so now we're gonna take the funnel out. That one is out. And this one is out. And we're gonna put the dipstick back in. Push it down. Okay. And you can see how this so you want to make sure when you do put it down that it goes all the way down like that. Now, I'm not going to put the screw in it for the moment because I don't need the screw in it. I don't need the screw in it to start the engine up and, uh, you know, make sure that it, it's and check it again. So we're just going to go ahead, grab my keys and... We'll start it, let it run for a minute or two. One of the things you want to do when you start it is I want to look underneath. So the nice thing is we don't see any drips on the concrete. There is no leakage or anything on the concrete. So um, there's no drips. This truck doesn't drip oil, it doesn't drip any fluids. And so we're going to let it run for a minute or two. And then we will check the fluids again. While it's running, we're going to check the fluid and make sure that, um, it is what it is, that, it, that everything works. So, uh... That everything's good so like i said we already checked the other fluids and we were fine so we don't know were we a quart down or were we more than a quart so we'll just uh 
let it run for here for a minute or two and then we're going to check it so i'm letting it run a little bit because it's only about 50 degrees out today which is actually very cold for florida um, but it's not as cold as the rest of the country right now so I'm letting it run for a minute or two. We're going to pull the dipstick out, check where it is. And it looks like we're where we're supposed to be, hold on. I always pull it out, clean it, then put it back and then check again. Just to double check. All right, so if you look here, you can kind of see now that we have fluid all the way up. So that's what we needed. So this thing was low on fluid. Um, and now we have fluid in there. And that's really what we needed to do. Now, whenever I put transmission fluid into a car, especially if I knew it was running a certain way, which this was running, it felt like a little different. You can, like this one here, it kind of felt like it was get it was in four-wheel drive. I didn't have the tire pull, so when you're in a truck and, you know, if you're in four-wheel drive on concrete, you'll feel the tire skip a little bit. But um, it kind of felt like it was in four-wheel drive because it was making a louder noise than normal. and. I didn't change the tires. Like if you've ever been in a truck that has really big tires, you'll hear the wah 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 wah. So for some reason, it started making a wah wah. And I've been, I've literally put 15,000 miles on this, probably in the last two months. Um, and I just put 700 miles on it over the weekend, going up to Georgia and coming back. So I knew um, it didn't sound correct to me. And I first first thing you do as I pulled over, check the tires, make sure a piece of tread, something didn't come off. It didn't. Next thing I did is I checked the four wheel drive. I put, I engaged the four wheel drive in a parking lot, unengaged it. It didn't make a difference. So I had a feeling it was low on fluid, or something was going on with the transmission. And then when I went and looked up a little bit of stuff on YouTube and other places, I saw that uh, you might have to add fluid at about 100,000 miles and I'm at about 128,000 right now so uh, I thought well let me do this just the simplest thing again letting it run check in the fluid and the reason I made this video is because last night I stopped to check the fluid and I'm like where the heck what do I need to do to check this fluid and I've never had a vehicle other than race cars where you have dipsticks and all that are screwed in so for whatever reason Nissan decided to do that, that's fine by me, I'm okay, I'll put the screw back in here in a minute, and then we're gonna take it for a test drive, uh, make sure everything's shifting right, uh, get the fluids going through it and everything else, warming it up a little bit. And it may just have been because it was really cold and the crankcase doesn't like cold, maybe because it was a cold and the fluid in there is what, five years old? Uh, even though it's a sealed transmission and everything, but. We're going to go ahead and put this in, put the bolt in, and uh, hopefully this will stop any issues from happening. And if you've never checked all your fluids, it's it's time. But I couldn't really find anything about how to do a 2017, and honestly 2005 to 2017, I think actually the 220, 2021 is the same if you had the v6 i don't know about the v4 i don't have a v4 but this is a four-wheel drive it's a v6 4.0 and so i just wanted to make a, an easy video as to how to do this so by the way um the fluids right now and we're talking we're in the 
October of 2022. So these fluids um, are ten dollars a piece. So that's in your budget. So they're about ten bucks a piece. I got it at O'Reilly's. If you, if you don't know what to get, go to O'Reilly's uh, or any place. But I go to O'Reilly's. If you go in and um, they'll they can look up whatever you need or whatever. So uh, you know, I use the O'Reilly's at Landa Lakes, which is uh, right up near where I'm at right now. So uh, I went in there and, um, you know, Aaron and Dave and uh, Adrian, all those guys in there are really good. So you walk in, you just tell them to look up. They can look up all the fluids you need. It doesn't cost anything. They'll figure it out for you. And so anyway, appreciate a uh, shout out to the Land of Lakes, uh, Florida, um, O'Reilly's. And so I'm going to put the screw in real quick and then we'll take it for a test drive. Oh, and you don't have to kill the screw to tighten it down. When you tighten the screw down, you just snug it. It just has to be snug, you know. So anyway, um, so yeah, and while you're doing this, you probably want to pick up some windshield wipers if you need them. Uh, one thing I always do, I when I buy wipers, and now wipers run anywhere from 10 bucks a piece to 50 bucks a piece for some cars. But I always keep the old ones, stick them in a little bag, stick them under the back seat, or in, if you have a vehicle, stick them in the trunk if you have a trunk. Because you never know if you're driving in the rain sometime and all of a sudden, and I've had it happen in my life, you may have had it, all of a sudden one of the windshield wipers breaks or rips or tears or just flies off. You have a spare set, even if they're not great, you have something to put on so you don't got that metal bar scraped in the windshield. So a little, little tip there. So anyway, um, you're going to see the truck. I bought some stuff or I got some stuff for my birthday, some cool stuff. Uh, that we're gonna put on we're gonna put a brush guard on it we're gonna put some lights on it and stuff so uh, stay tuned for those and uh, we're gonna go take this for a test drive Last thing I'm going to check real quick, just let's look underneath. I don't see any drips. And you will know if you, you know, you guys know, but if this is somebody who's not into cars and you're just watching this because you're trying to figure out how to do this for your first time, um, you always want to look and see if there's dripping beforehand and then dripping after. And then if you end up spilling some, know that it will drip. Uh, you also might want to be attuned to any smells. Uh, burning smells that kind of stuff but if um, you spilled some you also need to recognize that you also spilled some let's close the garage door here oh you know what I had those funnels are in the opening that's what's blocking the door okay yep these two funnels are in the way Put these up on the oil. Okay. All right. oh, I always try to keep a 10 millimeter uh, wrench and socket in my truck. Um, they seem to be always what's missing. All right, so let's back out here. Let's see if it feels different. It feels better. I hope it does. I'm just gonna drive around the block. Okay. So 
so yep yeah so now it feels um feels the way it did it it feels regular whatever regular would be you know for you and it sounds regular now so um one thing is like i said you can kind of feel it in the seat of your pants when you're low when the tranny's not doing exactly what it should be and sometimes you can hear it um i just could feel it it just felt not grinding but uh it just felt not as responsive i guess i don't know it sounded a little loud but um it's an easy thing to check and it should have been a lot easier anyway uh there you go april should they subscribe to this channel even if they don't like cars today for this one probably just for this one where it says merchandise store right here merchandise store link you will see it says https forward slash junkyards dash bar dash barn dash finds with and you click on that and it's going to take you here.